amen. The presence of the King is in this place, amen. So, magandang gabi po sa bawat isa. So, welcome po sa ating midweek service. At before we go to our message, let us pray first. Yes, Lord, Abba Father, we, uh, we honor you, we bless you, Lord God. We, we worship you, God, in spirit and in truth, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, sa buhay mo, God, na miligay para sa amin, Lord God. And as we listen to your word, O God, patuloy, Panginoon, we will be receive something new coming from you, God, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. For the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the impartation of your anointing today, O God. Hallelujah, Lord. At sa mga oras pa namin, Panginoon, and spend, O God, sa iyong presensya, maraming maraming salamat, O God. We give back to you all the glory, honor, and praises in His name, pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so for uh, for tonight's uh, message, I will talk about how to receive impartation. So I will talk about five keys in receiving Impartation. These are biblical keys, no? Which is based from the scriptures. Kung paano ba tayo makareceive ng impartation? No? But before that, let's define first what is impartation. When we talk about impartation, it means that it is a transfer of spirit from a mentor to the disciple through relationship. So, in terms of impartation, relationship is very, very important. Because impartation has the power to accelerate your growth as a believer. Impartation has the power to, to make you mature, has the power to accelerate your ministry. That is why, bawat isang believer, sobrang mahalaga po ng impartation sa ating mga boy. The impartation of the anointing, the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Now, as I've said a while ago, there are five biblical keys in terms of receiving the impartation or the power of the Holy Spirit. So, impartation is the transfer of spirit through relationship that takes place between the spiritual mentor and the spiritual disciple. So, hindi siya pwedeng member lang. Kailangan, there should be an intimate relationship. So, there should be a mentor, there should be a disciple. That's why, we have seen characters in the Bible such as uh, Elijah and Elisha that shows an example of impartation, how they were able to receive the impartation of the anointing. So, example dyan, si Elijah and Elisha, Moses and Joshua, Jesus and his disciples, King Saul and King David in some areas at the same time Paul and Timothy. So itong mga taong to, no? These are the perfect examples on how impartation takes place from a mentor to a spiritual disciple. Because when there is impartation, there is an acceleration. There's an acceleration of understanding the word. There is an acceleration in the ministry and many things that happens in us in our in our spiritual life. That's why it is very important that we connect to people who can pull us and help us. No, hindi ka pwede ka pati na maggrow na magisa lang. No, that's why it is important that there's there should be an impartation between you and a particular mentor. That's why you go to church. That's why you are involved in a cell group because. Kung anong meron ng cell group mo, may cell group leader mo, pwedeng maipasa sa iyo. Kung anong meron ng pastor mo, may pwedeng may pa, maaaring maipasa sa iyo because impartation takes place. So anong meron ang pastor mo, yun yung natatanggap natin. That's how impartation takes place. Pero let's first define what is an anointing and what is a mantle. Mantle it's spelled as M A N T E L, mantle and the anointing because there's a difference between those two, no. When we talk about the anointing, Anointing is simply the power of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the anointing, it simply means the power. When we talk about the mantle, it is the authority in which that power operates. So, when we talk about the anointing, it is the ability, no? But the mantle is the boundary of that ability, no? When we talk about the anointing, no? Your anointing flows, your mantle expands. So, mantle is something that is given as an assignment. Mantle is the level of authority in which the anointing operates. It simply means that the mantle is the boundary. The boundary in which uh, your anointing flows. That's why there, should, there are assignments that can be generational. That's why you have seen preachers. No? Nagtataka tayo bakit? We are anointed, but there are people who has a mantle nationwide, who has a mantle worldwide. There are preachers who has a mantle to be a tele-evangelist, no? A lawak-lawak ng ministry nila because that's their mantle that was assigned to them. So basically, God assigns mantle based on our wisdom at the same time to our preferences. That's why Billy Graham, the famous Billy Graham, no? Evangelist Billy Graham, 
mo makikita mo yung ministry niya, it's worldwide because that's his mantle, that was the assigned mantle to him. At yung mantle na yun, sabi ng tulad sinasabi dito, it is based on our wisdom, it is based on our preferences. That's why it is very important that we grow spiritually. It is important that we spend time with the Lord. No? Because, kapatid, if you want importation, you have to pay the price. No? So, again, no, let's focus now on how do we receive the anointing or how do we receive importation? Let's go with the first one. How to receive? Number one, of course, it's very, very important that we should have time with the Lord. According to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But you have received the Holy Spirit and He lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know and what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just, so just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. So it's very important, no? That anointing does not only happen or the impartation does not only happen when people lay hands of you, no? It is important, it's very, very important that if you want impartation takes place, you should have you should spend time with the lord you should spend time in prayer you should spend time reading the scripture because what the holy spirit is doing is that he gives you fresh revelation he tells you what to do he gives you uh power to discover what is real and what is true that's why time with the lord spending time with the lord is the most important aspect of impartation that's why peter and john the people were amazed because of what they did, no? Because of their boldness, sabi sa Acts 4.13, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. So they were being recognized. Why? Because they spent time with the Lord. Because when we spend time with the Lord, when we read the scripture, that's how foundation built that's how foundation takes place. When we spend time with the Lord, we are building foundation in our spiritual life. Amen. Kapatid, you cannot buy the anointing. You cannot say, lay hands on me and I, I want what you have. No, you cannot just do that. If you want importation, if you want the anointing, you have to pay the price. That is why when that's why when people used to have the mantle and if they don't understand, they, they don't have strong foundation, it crushed them apart. That's why when they receive something, when they receive the mantle, no, kung saan, oh, you will go to this certain area or certain place. This is your boundary. No? If you don't have strong foundations, kapatid, when you get discouraged, kapatid, it will crush you apart. That's why there are backsliders. There, there are people na nagkukwit sa ministry. Why? Because they don't have strong foundation and that strong foundation can be established if we have spent time with our Lord. Amen. That's why there's a particular person in the Old in the New Testament named Simon the Sorcerer. He tried to buy the Holy Spirit. He tried to buy the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 8 verse 22, kaya nung sinabi doon, he was rebuked because of impure motives and he wanted the power without the process kapatid if you want the power you have to pay the price you need to spend time with the Lord if you want impartation number one this is the most important you need to spend time with the Lord because that's how the Holy Spirit empowers you that's how worship empowers you that's why your worship is very very important kapatid because there are certain people who just want to receive something from the man of God but they, they don't do anything for themselves if you want to receive something, if you want impartation takes place in you, kapatid, you need to spend time with the Lord. Because kapatid, you cannot give what you do not have. And, and once you spend time with the Lord, that's the time that you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the time that you receive something from the Lord. That's why it gives you fresh revelations. That's why, that's why when you read the Word, there's a rhema word when, whenever you read the Bible. Amen. The anointing of God is not cheap, kapatid. Hindi cheap ang anointing ng Panginoon. If you want the anointing of the Lord, you need to spend time with the Lord. If you want, if you want impartation takes place, kapatid, you have, that's, you, have, you need to have a regular devotion with the Holy Spirit. Again, 
whenever I preach, I never remove the Holy Spirit in the scene. Kasi it's very, because the Holy Spirit has this important role in our lives. Hindi lang siya basta comforter, hindi lang siya basta teacher, kapatid. He empowers us. Like, like ano yung sinabi ko nung what I mentioned last preaching, the Holy Spirit empowers us. No? The reason why we, we can say no to sin is because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That's number one. We need to spend time with the Lord. We need to have time with the Lord. We need to have a regular... That's why in the godly habits, what's the first godly habit? Rendezvous with God. It means we need to really spend time with the Lord. It's not, it's not just about reading. It's not just about praying. Kapatid. Once you spend time with the Lord, it empowers you. Especially when you have struggles, kapatid, when you spend time with the Lord, you'll get set free from the bondage of the struggle that you have in this present time or kung ano mo yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon. Amen. Pangalawa ko dyan. First, you need to spend time with the Lord. Number two, teaching. Amen. Teaching. So, kailangan mo makinig ng turo. Makailangan mo makinig ng aral. That's why in Matthew chapter 20, verse 19 to 20, that's the Great Commission, no? Listening to the teaching of the gospel is important. Why? That is why spending time with the Lord is important because it helps us to determine no, what is godly teaching and what is heresy. It is connected to the first uh, key, which is spending time with the Lord. Kapatid, when you spend time with the Lord, another another uh, point to emphasize, no? when you spend time with the Lord, it helps you determine what are godly teaching and what are heresy. What are teachings that are heresy. Alam mo kung ano yung turo na galing sa Panginoon at alam mo yung turo na hindi galing sa Panginoon, kapatid. No? Because if you have, if you do not have the right foundation, it is easy for you to be swayed by doctrines of demons, kapatid. If wala kang tamang foundation, spiritual foundation, especially the gospel, no? Madali kang masway pa, kapatid, sa mga doktrina ng demonyo. No? If you don't have solid foundations with the Lord, you will just receive the things you hear from different people, kapatid. Madali ka madeceive. No? If you don't have strong foundation. That's why, when you uh, when we, when we talk about teachings, it is connected with the first one. We should have a solid foundation. We should have a solid foundation of the gospel of the Lord. What, is, what, was, what Jesus did on the cross. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon para sa atin? Kailangan malinaw yun, kapatid. No? Because kung wala kang tamang foundation spiritually, kahit sino na lang magsalita sa iyo kapatid, tatanggap ka ng especially pag magandang pakinggan. No? Pero hindi lahat ng magagandang pakinggan, hindi lahat ng mga mensahe mas magagandang pakinggan ay eh, tama. No? Hindi lahat ng mga salita na maganda sa pandinig ay eh, para sa iyo. No? Because you know, folks, Satan also uses opportunities. That's why when Jesus was tempted, sabi niya, ibibigay ko sa iyo tong mga to. Ibibigay ko sa yaman ng mundo if he bow down to me. So even Satan gives opportunities. Even Satan can use good words just to deceive you. That's why if you don't have solid foundation, it is easy for you to be deceived by the enemy. No? Second point. How to look for a mentor. Dito po mapasok yung teaching process. No? How to look for a mentor. Same thing. When you have solid foundation, you can discern sino yung mga taong totoong naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Sino yung totoong naglilingkod sa Panginoon na may puso para sa mga sir, para sa para sa mga kaluluwa, no? You can discern sino yung mga totoong naglilingkod sa Panginoon at sino yung mga may motibo sa loob ng church. Kapatid, I tell you, there are people inside the church na hindi buo ang puso sa paglilingkod. They just want something. This is come. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Hindi lahat ng nasa church has an authentic heart. I'm not saying dito sa church natin, I'm not saying that, no? But, marami, maraming lugar na naglilingkod na hindi tama ang puso. Na naglilingkod dahil merong motibo. Kapatid, if you have solid foundation, you know where, whom you will connect. You will know kanino ka kokonekta, kanino ka magpapamentor. That's why, how to look for a mentor, number one, I should know the teachings they put out. Kapatid, when they speak, you know sa Panginoon. You know, 
actually even discernment of the spirit kapatid kahit hindi pa nagsasalita yan pag tumayo sa harapan or sa cell group niya pag, hey, kahit na, pag nung first time mo pala siya makita if you have solid foundation kapatid because of your spending time with the Lord malalaman mo kung sa Diyos o hindi you can discern that why? because the Holy Spirit empowers you at the same time you should know the teachings they put and God will touch you and yung point na you know that the Holy Spirit is touching you whenever they teach something. Whenever they teach the word, whenever they preach the word, natatouch ka ng banal na spirito. Kapatid, listen to this. The word of God should always have conviction by the Holy Ghost. Again, whenever a man of God preaches, preach the word, there should always be conviction coming from the Holy Spirit. Sobrang mahalaga ang conviction ng banal na spirito. Kapatid, that's why you, you should never, ako, in my perspective, in my in my personal experience, no, I never, di ako si sugar ko whenever I preach the word. Whenever I whenever I listen to the Holy Spirit, no, at ito binigyan niyang mensahe, kapatid, at itong pinapasabi, I will tell, kasabihin ko talaga kung ano yung pinapasabi ng banal na spirito. Hindi ko, na, hindi ko kailangan gumawa ng intentional preaching na nakaka-encourage, kapatid. Because if galing sa Holy Spirit ang mensahe mo, kapatid, nakaka-encourage yan sa atin sa gusto. May conviction yan. Kung, kung ang mensahe talaga yung galing sa banal na spirit o ng mensahe galing sa Panginoon, kapatid, hindi mo na kailangan pang gumawa ng intentional preaching na nakaka-inspire. Dahil panigurado, kapatid, kapag galing sa Holy Spirit, nakaka-inspire yan. That's why I always tell, tell this, no? You, right now, you are hearing the same message. Right now, you are hearing the same words that comes from me. Pero ang dating sa inyo, iba-iba. Why? Because of the conviction of the Holy Ghost. There are people who get encouraged. There are people na nakoconvict. May, may, mayroong mga taong receive conviction coming from the Holy Ghost. Mayroong na-strengthen yung faith. No? Mayroong na-change yung mindset. Mayroong nababago yung pag-iisip nila. Why? Because it actually based on what you need today. Amen. I don't need to do make a preaching that can inspire people. Whenever, if the message that that I made comes from the Holy Spirit, it will inspire you. It will help you grow. Kasi galing sa banal na spirito, hindi lang, di ko siya intentional na ginawa. Ah, kailangan, ah, kailangan, nakaka, kailangan nakaka-aplip yung turo ko ngayon. Kasi ganito, ganito, ganito. Kapatid, no? Kailangan mong makinig sa banal na spirito kung ano ba yung need mo sa panahon na to. That's why, whenever you read the Word of God, Sobrang mahalaga kaya nga sobrang mahalaga yung pagbabasa ng salita ng Panginoon, yung pag-spend time mo sa Panginoon because if you if you not listen to the Holy Ghost kapatid, ano ibibigay mo? Amen. Amen. So next, number three Laying on of hands, lay hands, no? Number three is laying hands. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 4 din sabi dito, do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive through the prophecy spoken over over you when the elders of the church lay, laid their hands on you. Kapatid, laying hands, laying on of hands is very important as well. No? That whenever a person has a spiritual gift of prophecy and they, these elders lay their hands on you, kapatid, you need to grab the opportunity to do it. Kasi kapatid, especially, kung meron ka nang nareceive meron ko lang receive coming from the Lord at nung sinabi nung sinabi nung lingkod ng Panginoon is confirmation na rin mo kapatid grab the opportunity huwag ka namang patong pikto pikta yung iba kasi nahihiya eh especially pag nagpa-altar ko alam pastor kapatid take the opportunity to be in front especially kapatid if you already received something from the Lord at nung sinabi nung propeta or nung pastor is confirmation na narinig mo kapatid huwag ka namang huwag dalawang isip go magpalayhans ka dahil powerful yan, kapatid. No? In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, This is why I remind you to find into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power of love and self-discipline. No? Kapatid, when, when people lay out when people lay their hands, no, take the opportunity. Kaya sabi niya, do not, do not neglect, sabi dito eh. This is why I remind to fan into flames, no? Do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive through the prophecy spoken over. Yun siya sabi ng 1 Timothy 
No? Kaya lang, the problem is, when people go to the front, and kapag ka-pray, katumba, tayo agad, balik ugat sa puan. Yun yung madalas na naging problema natin, kapatid. No? There are people at the same time, na, who wants to receive, gusto magpa-pray, kung gusto makuha kung anong meron, ng anointing ang pastor, kung anong meron, meron anointing yung man of God, pero ayaw na mangyapla yung turo. Ayaw na mangyapla yung tinuturo niya. That is why, no? There were people used to post, ano yun? Famous preachers, no? Meron mga tao, especially in social media, post ang post sa mga famous preachers, sa mga tele-evangelists, pero yung turo ng pastor na linggo, hindi naman nila kayang i-share. No? Again, meron, merong maraming ganito. They share yung mga quotes ng ibang pastor, mga international preachers, pero yung scripture ng pastor nila tinuro nung Sunday, hindi man nila kayang i-post or hindi man nila kayang i-share sa Facebook nila or sa Instagram or sa Twitter. See? No? Sometimes yung problema tayo eh. No? That's why you should, we should find, no? We should love our mentors. We should love our pastors. We should love our leaders. No? If you want them to receive, kailangan kapatid, we should also be aware on ano yung tinuturo nila. Kailangan ever din tayo kung ano yung nare-receive natin. No? Hindi lang basta gusto mo, kapatid, kailangan ina-apply mo din yung turo nila. No? Like for example, there are people na gusto magpa-mentor sa isang pastor, pero yung mga, pero yung mga libro niya ayaw nyo namang supportahan. That's the problem. That's most, then yung madalas sa problem. Gusto nating magpa-mentor, pero yung mga tinuturo nila, ayaw naman nating i-apply, or ayaw naman nating tangkilitin, ayaw naman nating supportahan. No? That's why sabi dito, if I lay my hands to people and did not receive none of my teachings, the person will just stand up and walk away. Totoo yun. Kung nag-lay hands ka at, dun, at wala siya na-receive doon sa mga tinuturo mo, ang tendency niya, madalas mangyayari, tatayo lang yan after mong pinag-pray. No? Kapatid, unless they will apply the teachings that they learn, that activates when they, when they were lay hands. Ibig sabihin ng kapatid, what when the, when the pastor lay hands to the people, or the man of God lay hands to the people, it has been deposited to you by the Holy Spirit. So, there is the, the deposit that has been made and activation when you live according to the teachings. Hindi lang basta kapatid nagpapray ka. Kailangan may application. Kailangan na apply mo. Yung tinuro. Amen. Amen. Eh, ka mo, eh mo ba sa mag, eh mo ba sa magpa-pray? Eh mo ba sa magpa-lay hands, kapatid? It is important na kailangan may nakadeposito sa iyo. Na yun na rin mo kapatid, is the confirmation. No, that's why when you been received that, pray pray kanya kapatid na activate na. Amen. Number 4. Honor and service. Again, let's have a review. Number one is time to the Lord. Second is teachings. Number three, laying on of hands. Number four, honor and service. Sabi sa first Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 to 16, it is the sto story of how, how uh, King Saul was fermented by, by, uh, by, by it is, uh, King Saul was fermented, no? By spirit, fermenting spirit, No? na nag-cause ng depression in fear sa akin, sabi sa 1 Samuel 16, 14 to 16, that the Spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression. Some soul servants said to him, a tormenting spirit from God is troubling, troubling you. Let us find a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. He will play soothing music, and you will soon be well again. First of all, Ito na yung time na kung saan tinutorment na ng tinutorment si Saul ng ano, King Saul ng spirit, tormenting spirit, no? Because of his disobedience sa Panginoon. 
a tendency kailangan niyang humanap ng isang musician na para mawala yung tormenting spirit na yon. So first of all, God did not send that tormenting spirit just to torment soul. No? But it served as a last resort that leads to repentance. No? Ibig sabihin, ito yung last resort para si Saul mag, magsisi siya. So ibig sabihin, ito yung mercy ng Panginoon kay King Saul. No? At humating di pa doon, kapatid, yung nagpi-play sa kanya, ang nagpi-play ng music para kay King Saul is yung papalit sa trono niya, which is which is David, no? That's why even David, no, has been troubled at the same time, no? Even David has been troubled at the same time. Nung siya ang hari. Oh, give, sabi sa Psalms 51 verse 8, Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. So David was, was also term, tormented. So ano po yung pinupunta ko dito, kapatid? Honor and service is important is necessary when we talk about impartation. We talk about receiving impartation. You know, yung time na ginawa ni David kay Saul, kahit na si Saul nag-disobey siya sa Panginoon, still, ang, pa, ang, ang haring papalit sa kanya ay pinagsilbihan pa rin siya. So, ibig sabihin nun, David serves Saul even though he is not right with God. So, ibig sabihin, pinagsilbihan pa rin ni David, si Saul, kahit alam ni David na hindi tali na tama ang puso ni Saul. Honor and service. Kapatid, I, I tell you, yung mga RRF leaders natin, yung mga cell group leaders natin, yung mga pastor natin, yung senior pastor natin, yung residence pastor natin, yung lingkod, we're not perfect. May mga pagkakamali pa rin kami. We have still flaws, we still have problems, may mga weaknesses pa din kami. No? That's why do not expect perfection. But we strive to live. We strive to live. Ano ba yung gusto paggawa ng Panginoon sa atin? But kapag at the end of the day, meron pa din something sa ano, meron pa din na isang area ng buhay namin na we na work out pa rin ang Panginoon. That's why sabi ng Santang Panginoon, we are transferred from glory to glory. No? That's why there are people na kapag meron silang din na gusto sa pastor nila, iniiwan nila. Kapag at hindi ganun. Ang mga pastor ko, hindi, per- hindi perfect yan, mga yan. At kung maghahanap ka ng mga number one discouraged sa tao, yan ang mga pastor. Maghahanap ka ng mga tao, maraming problema, yan ang mga pastor. Because we had been hit in our backs. No? Kung alam nyo lang, ano yung pinagdadaanan ng mga pastor natin ngayon. Paano, especially sa mga ibang bansa, how they, paano sila napapersecute? Paano sila na-discourage, kapatid? That's why, we need to serve the man and the woman of God or your cell group leaders, kapatid. Ang mga cell group leaders natin, nagkakamali. Kaya nga, sobrang mahalaga yung core values natin dito, yung alpha o. Love, forgiveness, acceptance, humility, and understanding. Kapatid, kung walang ganyan, kapatid, iiwan mo yung pastor mo, iiwan mo yung leader mo. Kapatid, walang, there's no such thing as a perfect church. There's no such thing as a perfect pastor. Dahil sa gusto mo, kahit gaano ka-establish ang isang church, kapatid, kahit sa gusto mo, meron pa din mga issues dyan. Meron pa din mga problema dyan. Actually, honestly speaking, sabi nga nung isang apostle, nung nag-attend ako ng conference, ay sabi nung isang apostle, I never met a man of God na 100% nag-agree kami sa lahat ng bagay. Sa ayaw at sa gusto mo, kapatid, meron pa rin mga differences. Especially sa style ng pananamit, sa choice of music. No? yung mga issues na in terms of interpretation of the scripture, may mga difference yan. I never met a, a man of God na 100% nag-agree kami sa lahat ng mga bagay. No? Lahat ha, 100%. Yung sinasabi ko, kapatid, na meron pa ding mga certain areas, may mga flaws, may mga negative pa din sa ayon mo sa gusto. Kaya sobrang mahalaga yung pakunawa. How do you serve them? How do you honor them? No? Look at Elijah and Elijah. Elijah was depressed that time. No? Pero, kahit saan pumunta si Elijah, sinusundan siya ni Elisha. Why? Because of loyalty, godly habit. That's a godly loyalty. It's godly habit number four, if I'm not mistaken. Kahit saan pumunta si Elijah, Elijah was dis- was depressed. Why? Diba? Nung pinapa, ano, binantaan siya ni Jezebel, napapatayin, na depressed si Elijah. And, tendency, yun yung weak, naging weakness ni Elijah. Ang matindi pa doon, kapatid, kahit saan pumunta si Elijah, sinusundan siya ni Elisha. Why? 
because of loyalty, because of relationship, because of understanding, because of meron silang intimate relationship. It's simply as, kapatid, when there's familiarity between the man and the woman of God, when you become familiar with the man and the woman of God, it blocks the ability to receive impartation. The number one hindrance, bakit kapatid, hindi ka nakakatanggap ng impartations because of familiarity. Huwag mong iisipin kamag-anak mo yan, huwag mong iisipin nanay mo yan, kapatid mo yan, cell group leader mo yan, or matagal mo na siya kilala. Kapatid, pag naging familiar, if there's familiarity with you, kapatid, it blocks the ability to receive the impartation. The question, my question for you, how do you serve your cell group leader? How do you serve the man and the woman of God? How do you serve your pastor? How do you serve your How do you serve bishop? No? Let me uh, tell you this. Because sometimes we are been masyado tayong na overwhelmed of the title. Pastor yan. No? Man of God yan. No? Bago tayo pumunta doon sa man of God, let's focus on the man first. Yes, you serve the man of God as a pastor, as a man of God, but how do you serve that person? As who he is. How do you serve Pastora, Fujishi, Pastora Cherry Fujishima as Cherry Fujishima? Alone. Alisin mo yung title. How do you serve Arman Kudya as Arman Kudya? Alisin mo yung prophet. Alisin, let's set a type ng title. Kaya tendency, pag nagkamali yung mga yan, nagkamali yung mga malingkod ng Diyos, nagkamali kami mga lingkod ng Diyos, tendency, iniiwan. Why? Hindi malinaw yung honor and service. Tinong si David, even though Saul was not right with God, still, he served him. Amen. That's why, listen to this, it is very important. If you do, that's why, if you do not have grace for them, again, ah, I talk about the man and the woman of God. If you do not have grace for them, God will not give you grace to receive from them. Again, if you do not have grace for them, for the man and the woman of God, or sa cell group leader mo, God will not give you grace to receive from them. Kapatid, sa ayit sa gusto mo, lingkod ng Diyos yan, pinili ng Panginoon yan. Kapatid, once you are willing to have grace on them, God will make you closer and give you revelation that is why God can use you mightily. Kapatid, before you serve the man of God, you should serve the man first. And with that, kapatid, if you serve the man first, no, you can find discipline. You can find patience. And that's where impartation takes place. Kapatid, kapatid mo, alam mo, pag pinagsisilbihin mo yung mga lingkod ng Diyos o yung mga, yung mga leader mo, kapatid, that's how the relationship takes place. Dito pumapasok yung number five. Kasi paano mo makikilala yung isang tao kung hindi mo siya makikilala ng malapitan? Paano mo, like for example, sa, Diba? Sa pamilya natin, bakit kahit ilang beses magkamali yung family member natin, we still accept him. Why? Because kilala natin, kilala, kilala natin siya. We know his strengths and weaknesses. Alam natin kung saan siya magaling. Alam natin saan siya nangihina. That's why whenever they fail, we still accept them. Ganun din ho dapat sa mga lingkod ng Diyos. I'm not saying, I'm not saying na, so okay lang kahit magkamali pa ulit. Hindi, hindi naman ganun kapati. I'm telling na, ang, ang, ang try, pinopoint ay ko lang is, a man of a woman of God, may mga pagkakamali din. May mga pagkakamali din. May mga shortcomings din. At merong area pa ng buhay namin na hanggang ngayon inaayos ang Panginoon. That's why, di ba? Tinyo si Jesus. Then, nireject siya sa Nazareth. Hindi siya nakagawa ng miracle. Sa so, Mark 6.5, He could not do any miracles. No? except lay his hands on a few sick, few sick people and heal them. Hindi siya makagawa ng milagro sa Nazareth. Why? Because he was rejected. He was not honored. He was not served. Kahit sa sarili niyang, bab, kahit sa sarili niyang lugar, hindi siya makagawa ng miraglo. Bakit? 
he was rejected. That's why this honor blocks the anointing. Again, this honor blocks the anointing. And familiarity becomes the breeding ground of this honor. Familiarity becomes the breeding ground of this honor. You know, folks, kahit five times mo nang narinig yung turo, yung preaching na yan, kapatid, hindi ka dapat magkaroon ng familiarity. Because some din sa tama, Panginoon, there are, they are new every morning. And that, in a, marami yung preaching sa rinig ko na nang paulit-ulit ko nang narinig, pero still, I still enjoy it. Why? Because there's still a revelation coming from the Holy Ghost. Kapatid, itong preaching na to, total pwede nyo namang i-review. Maaaring yung dating sa inyo ngayon is iba sa susunod na panoorin nyo itong preaching na to. Same thing sa mga, sa mga Facebook Live natin, sa mga nakaraan. Kung babalikan nyo yung mga yan, kapatid, at, at pakinggan nyo ulit yung preaching, baka yung message sa inyo iba compared sa nauna. Yun yung sinasabi kong they are new every morning. Amen. So you need to honor and serve the man and woman of God. Amen. And lastly, no, number five, key number five is proximity in relationship. Sobrang mahalaga sa impartation, yung proximity. Proximity means distance. Yung distance mo sa mentor mo distance between the mentor and the disciple. Gaano ka kalapit sa RRF leader mo? Gaano ka kalapit sa pastor mo? Gaano ka kalapit sa cell group leader mo? That's distance. At gaano katindi ang relasyon ng pastor mo sa iyo? Gaano katindi ang relasyon ng cell group leader mo sa iyo bilang isang uh, spiritual disciple? You know folks, impartation happens when there is there's relationship. Dito pumapasok yung core values kasi. Kasi, eh, dito pumapasok yung parang sa kasa, in sickness and in health, no? kasama mo yung leader mo. Hindi kanya iniwan. Look at Joshua and Moses. Look at Elijah and Elisha. Especially, yung dalaw, yung, yung si Elijah and Elisha. Sila yung perfect example ng uh, proximity and distance. But before that, let's read Romans 1.11. Sabi dito, sabi ni Paul, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. Sabi niya, kailangan kitang makita, kapatid. There would be certain point na enable for you to receive the anointing, kailangan ng distansya. Kailangan ng distance ng malapitan for you to receive that impartation. No? Because there are only things, sabi dito, that can be transferred through proximity and relationship. At yan na natanggap ni Elisha kay Elijah. Elisha was able to experience a double portion because of the proximity. Because of yung distance niya kay Elijah. Hindi niya iniwan si Elijah. Kaya na-receive ni Elisha yung double portion ng anointing. At tamating di pa doon kapatid, ang naka-experience ng supernatural, yung nakadikit kay Elijah, kasi yung nakadikit kay Elijah, si Elisha. Nung hinampas ni Elijah yung kanyang parang ano, yung parang robe niya, hinampas niya ganun sa parang scarf, hinampas niya yung scarf din sa ilog, nung nahati yung ilog. Sino naka-experience yun? Si Elijah. Pero yung mga spectator na nanonood, nakita lang nila pero hindi nila na-experience. Kaya kapatid, when you have an intimate relationship with your spiritual mentor, you will experience. There are things that pwede lang, there are certain things na pwede lang matransfer through proximity and distance. I tell you that. Kaya ako sa inyo, luguran tala rin mentors tamo. Same thing, mentors, luguran tala rin kaya katamong disciples. Kasi kapatid, kung anong meron sila, mapapasa sa'yo. Ang matindi pa dun kapatid, pag napasa sa'yo, baka higitan mo pa yung mentor mo. Diba? Look at Elisha, nahigitan niya si Elijah. Why? Because he received the double portion of the anointing. Amen. Amen. Let's have a review again. Number one, key of impartation is, number one is, we should spend time with the Lord. Number two, we should listen to teachings. Number three, laying, laying on of hands. Number four, 
There should be honor and service. And number five, there should be proximity and relationship between the spiritual mentor and the disciple. Pangarap na, sabi nga ni Pastor Ache, sa mga nagdanda ang mga preachings niya, wala nang masasarap pa sa pakiramdam ng pastor kung di makita niya yung mga dinidisciple niya o yung mga miyembro ay lumalago spiritual. You know, my desire, especially, bilang pong yung assistant pastor ng ating iglesia, is maka makakita kung makapagproduce tayo ng mga leaders, makapagproduce tayo ng, ng mga disciple na masigit pa sa akin. That's my desire. Because at the end of the day, no, yung mantel natin na expand yan. Yung mantel natin na expand no na pinapalawak ng Diyos yung boundary natin na hindi lang tayo, I do believe na hindi lang tayo pang araya. I do believe that meron isa sa ating tinawag para magmission para maging evangelist, para maging prophet. No? Aniniwala ako sa panahon ngayon, maraming i-raise up na evangelist ng Panginoon. That's why receiving this impartation of the Almighty is very, very important. And at the end of the day, as we receive the impartation, lahat yan rooted. Lahat yan rooted. No? Lahat yan rooted dun sa uh, spending time with the Lord, having an intimate relationship with the Lord. Yung devotion natin, as we spend time with the Lord, with prayer, and as we read the scripture, kapatid, dun nagsisimula lahat. If you want anointing, if you want impartation, you have to pay the price. hindi siya cheap, hindi lang siya, it's just a blink of an eye, nandiyan na. No? Yung, mga, yung mga preachers natin, nakilala, kapatid, hindi naman nung nag-uumpisa, hindi naman ganyan katindihan. Nagsimula din silang mag-umpisa sa ministry na napakahirap. No? Kaya nung in-raise up sila ng pakinot, nandiyan, nakikita natin sila ngayon, no, na napaka-powerful, because at the end of the day, it is rooted on their habit on their godly habit, which is having a rendi with God. Amen? Amen. So, I hope po, no, sa ating pakikinig ng salita ng Panginoon, meron po tayong na-receive coming from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. At naniniwala po ako na nasa pakikinig natin ng mensahe nito, no, there are new mindsets sa bago yung mindset natin. Naka-receive tayong something sa Panginoon. No? Tulad ko rin sinabi ko, I will always tell you the truth. I always tell you the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for touching our hearts. Thank you for giving us, O oh God. Thank you for empowering us, O oh God, by your most precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right now, I declare, take control to every family who is who are listening, O God, in this message. Lord, I thank you for the impartation of the anointing, O God, will take, will take place. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you as we spend time with you, O God. As we spend time with prayer and devotion, Lord God. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Sa araw nito, O God, sa kabig nito, na pinagkalaman sa bawat sa amin, O God, aniniwala namin, Panginoon. Something is going to happen in our lives, so God, we thank you, Father. Naniniwala kami, Panginoon, hindi ka patapos, Panginoon, sa aming mga buhay. Lord, I declare the peace. I declare your peace. I declare your shalom in the name of Jesus. I declare your kingdom abundance in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare prosperity in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Salamat ba ng Espiritu dahil kasama ka namin, O God. Naniniwala kami, Panginoon, hindi mo kami iiwan, hindi mo kami pababayaan, Panginoon, dahil kasama ka namin, Panginoon, sa lahat ng aming pinagdadaanan sa aming mga buhay, O God. Maraming maraming salamat, O God. We give back you all the highest career and praises. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. So, thank you so much po for watching. And again, as I promote po, do not forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. In the presence of Jesus Ministries, IPJM Arayat, and also uh, always share po natin yung mga godly quotes sa pinapost sa ating Facebook page, official Facebook page, and our also, don't forget to follow in our Instagram account. So maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, this is Pastor Jerry Makapagal signing off. Shalom. You are blessed. Good night.